Hi, I'm John Pettuccino, Professor of Astronomy at College of the Redwoods. This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class, from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. The next point we're going to discuss is our place in the cosmos. And Though we may not have that well-defined at this point in our life, we do know that we're part of a galaxy, that we orbit the sun. But that was not the thinking hundreds or even thousands of years ago. That story begins with a discussion of something called geocentrism, which is attributed to a guy by the name of Ptolemy, who did his work around 140 AD. Ptolemy believed, as many of his time did, that the Earth sat at the center of the universe, and that planets, and in fact even the Moon and the Sun, orbited the Earth. There was really no attention given to exactly why that happened, but the point is, in Ptolemy's geocentric model, Earth-centered model, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, this time we didn't know about Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. All of these things moved around the Earth in concentric circles, sort of like layers of an onion. Lastly, we had the fixed stars. The fixed stars weren't called fixed because they didn't move. Anyone could go outside and know that the stars move over the course of the night, just as the sun and the moon does, and the, and the planets do. But they were called fixed because they stayed in the same relation to each other. So, the fixed stars, the Big Dipper, always look like the Big Dipper. And for a variety of reasons, this model stuck around for a long time. There were a few reasons that we identified during lecture. Number one, this model worked. It felt comfortable. So this model worked. It looked as if the sun rise and set. It looks as if the moon rises and sets. Secondly, the powers that be, mainly the church in this case, became invested in this model and taught it as part of their dogma to suggest otherwise that the sun or in fact some other object was the center of the solar system was problematic from a dogmatic point of view in terms of the church. So the church became invested in this model and so not only did it appear to work from the perspective of people who were looking at it, but it also uh, fit with the teachings of the populace, which of course in this time were not highly educated. In fact, a tiny percentage of people could even read and write. And that leads me to my last point, which is it worked, the church became invested in it, and lastly, you'd say, well, couldn't they make some observations with early telescopes? Couldn't they do things later on to try to figure out that from a scientific perspective, this model didn't work? Isn't that, after all, what the scientific method is all about? Yes, I couldn't agree more. But the scientific method didn't exist in 1200, 1300, 1400. In fact, some of the early practitioners of the scientific method, people like Galileo, who we're going to discuss in a few moments, uh, were the ones who first got us thinking that there might be other models that fit better. So the scientific method that idea of identifying a problem, gathering data, coming up with a theory, and then testing that theory did not exist at this time either. And that caused human beings to believe, for the most part, for 1,500 years, that in fact this model was the best fit. It would take someone by the name of Copernicus in 1543 to shake up that idea.